This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at Seagraph 2019. To my immediate right is Jim Jeffers, Senior Director, Advanced Rendering for Intel. Welcome to the program, Jim. Thank you. So what's Intel excited about at Seagraph this year? Well, I think there's a couple things. I think um, we've been pretty silent in the past about uh, our impact and our contribution to the content creation industry, animation, visual effects, but ultimately, um, essentially every movie, every program has uh, Intel processors, Intel software involved in it, including software that my team makes. And uh, we're really excited to actually tell the world about this. We've been kind of silent, um, maybe took it for granted, but you know, we're here to kind of make this industry better because we think it has broader impact than just the movies. Now, the movies have great impact, but we think it can have a much broader impact on uh, culture, on uh, our entertainment, but also in science and other areas. Uh, but what we're kind of interested in is, uh, again, for the movies, you know, the the professional content creation, the 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 people who uh, do the special effects. Everybody kind of knows they need big computing power. It's expensive, uh, you know, and movies are big budget. But really our vision is about enabling what we believe is about a billion people who want to create their own stuff. This goes from YouTubers to, um, to just people who are at home doing personal stuff. And our ultimate goal is to take the technologies that we create now uh, for this industry and make them easier to use, make the computing power the right thing so, so people large numbers of people can become creators themselves. So, for argument's sake, I mean, I, I own a computer, I could go to Best Buy, I could buy software. What, like, what would be different in this future world? How would, we do, how would Intel do things differently to enable this billion plus in creativity? Um, there's kind of a really technical piece to it. Um, the movies that you see that look so, sometimes so real, uh, Avengers movies, Mar Marvel movies, um, uh, really many movies that you wouldn't expect are using special effects that are integrated into the movie with what we call photorealism. And I and my team create software that enables that photorealism. It fully integrates into the, into the story and the capability. We also use that same capability, for instance, with NASA to help them uh, understand how air flows over a, an, en an engine that's going up into the into the air. So these things kind of mix together. And again, I'm talking about like very big data, all those capabilities. What we want to do is, is, as time goes on, uh, enable, uh, again, you on your laptop to take new technologies that we create, the, the ability to shrink the technologies, what we call Moore's Law, and deliver that to more and more people at a cost that they can afford. Hmm. Now, maybe the movies will be doing something incredible. We want to enable them to be so creative uh, to do and keep entertaining us. But actually, with the whole social world that we're in, uh, many people kind of just want the tools to simply execute their vision. And so our vision is, over the next, say, five to 10 years, is take this technology that movie studios use and deliver it to the broad population. And we think it's good for society. Uh, it enables people to uh, get their creative juices flowing. Um, and, you know, we, we uh, enable kind of a new paradigm of people creating. So uh, to enable people using these creative tools, I mean, do they need hardware of their own? Is this done in the cloud, a hybrid? What, what are you envisioning? <clears throat> I think there's going to be a lot of cloud enabling, to be honest with you. Uh, it does take a lot of, uh, for lack of a better word, heavy metal uh, to do some of these things. Now, um, again, our goal is to create a, uh, a, a hardware and software environment. We actually call the software one API. Uh, and the you know the hardware or our processors uh, we are uh, have announced uh, in the past and are working very hard on uh, GPU technology that will fold really well in in a in a cohesive way with our environment. So we do something we call no transistor left behind. Transistor is the key 
sub element to uh, make processors work and, and make processing work. But um, yeah, we want to uh, deliver that technology uh, uh, vision again to uh, a large group of people while we still, uh, you know, uh, provide it. And I think the cloud is going to be the place where the delineation of, you know, your cell phone is only going to have so much power over time. Now, at some time in the future, it may have the power of today's content creators, but you're going to, we're already going to be doing more at that time anyway. So I think the cloud is going to be a big place where it enables that earlier than people might expect. I'm just hitting a realization now, and you tell me if I'm way off. It's okay if I am. Mm -hmm. We're at Seagraph, and we're really surrounded by the elite when it comes to content creation and graphics and knowing how to use real-time rendering and the whole thing. But right. what I'm hearing from you is it, this isn't the audience for this. This is actually a far wider audience of, of, of that would, could be using these tools. People would never be at Seagraph, but would ultimately benefit from this. So, Am I about right or am I way off? You're in between. Um, so, look, this isn't magic. This is a lot of hard work, okay, in order us to enable, to have this vision to enable. So the vision to enable the everyday man or the everyday creator is, is, is a long-term vision we have. I can't define long-term. It could be three years, it could be five years, it could be next year, depending on who does it. So we're going to work it in steps. We're going to look at that long-term vision and try to create products, software, elements that drive us to that vision. Uh, today, that vision is expensive, right? We, we real-time, uh, what we call global illuminated or ray-traced rendering is a whole new technology that takes a lot of compute power. But I think the, the thing going back to the cloud, what we'll be able to do is with the cloud uh, capability, we'll be able to take what we deliver to studios who have their own massive infrastructures to get the movie out on time. We can provide that infrastructure to millions of people to access. So it's, uh, it's not magic, uh, it's the computational power, the efficiency, the capability, and then offering it in a way that's more accessible. So I think you're gonna see a lot of more visual cloud computing. We all like vision. We all uh, are visual animals, if it, if it were. And we see the opportunity to create solutions and software and hardware that with the you know big metal you can put in a data center, we can begin to create the series of technologies to bring it right to your home, right to your cell phone, right to your laptop, and be dynamic, I guess you would say, from an engineering standpoint. The ability to recognize, oh, you're on a laptop that has some more, more graphics and compute power, I can do more with that. Oh, they need more cloud performance power because I've got a cell phone. So trying to democratize that capability, I think it's gonna happen sooner than most people think. And uh, I, you you listed a number of applications, but should I read in? Should I infer that this goes beyond entertainment? I mean, the applications for this technology is almost infinite, right? Absolutely. I'm um, you know I'm the kind of person who uh, I obviously love movies. I love being involved in that industry. I love uh, touching all the various industries we do with visual. Uh, visual capabilities, visual computing, if you call it. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, I forgot your question. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> all I was pointing out was, I mean, yeah. here we are, we're sitting in, like, inter entertainment's home, right? Here at Seagraph, exactly. right? Yeah. But I, I, the, what oh, you're describing I, I is, I think answer. the applications yeah. are obviously going further they're, than that. They're really infinite. I, I mean, I, again, kind of as somebody who stands with a foot in, research and visionary stuff, and really the practicality of delivering a movie, you know, next year, in conjunction with our partners, uh, the possibilities for someone who's creative, from an individual using open source software, which we're very supportive of, um, you know, uh, and, and that's a br broadening capability. Uh, in a way, the quote, sky's the limit, right? The, the, we want to enable that creativity that humans have um, 
to people who don't necessarily, you know, make it their everyday job to deliver movies. But you might want to deliver something really cool, funny, whatever you want to do. Uh, why don't we provide those tools to do it in three years? Why can't we do that? That's kind of what our, the question to ourselves is, why can't we enable that? Let the person who has, wants to do a funny birthday party theme with a video and everything, and they can't achieve it. They don't have the tools, they don't have those capabilities. Why can't we enable that for everybody? Sounds good. Well, th this okay. is really exciting stuff. So thanks. Well, th thanks so much for joining us, Jim. It's great. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. This is Neil Schneider for MTBS-TV at Seagraph 2019. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.